Here I'm going to tell you all about advanced data filters in Excel, what they are, how to use them, and give you the foundation, the building blocks for doing more advanced things with them for your own data sets. Once you learn how to use advanced data filters, the regular stuff is, uh, regular filters are really going to seem quite inadequate in many situations. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. First things first, this is what your data set is going to look like before you perform an advanced filter. We're not going to have any of the criteria stuff you saw in the intro, and this is the data as it is when it is not filtered. So there are more rows in this right now. And there are a few things that you need to do to set up an advanced data filter. So the first thing is that you need your data set to have a header row like this, and each column should have a different title. If you have two that are the same, like this, just go ahead and put a number after one of them so that it's easy to differentiate between the two. The next thing is to put four or five rows above your data table, above the data you'd like to filter. So I'm going to hit insert and then control Y to repeat that. Maybe that should be good enough. Okay. So you want to have a few rows above. On a lot of examples online, you'll see people that do this to the right of the data set. That's a bad idea. You can use it in some situations, but not all situations. So default to putting your filter criteria up here above the data table. And filter criteria is what you're going to use to filter the data. So when you go down here to do a normal filter, go to the Data tab, click Filter, you get a drop-down arrow, and you input, let me do this one, you input your filter criteria over here, sorting by color, number filters, and you choose your options like this. However, for the advanced filter, we're going to actually type all of our options out into the worksheet. Now, at first, it's going to seem really difficult, but once you get used to it, it feels a bit easier, I would say. So let's remove that. Now, the first step is to take all of these columns and paste them up here to the filter criteria. Technically, you don't have to do it like this. You could just have individual columns, the ones that you want to use for filters, or even duplicates of columns, but that's beyond this specific tutorial. But for now, let's keep life very easy. Copy all of the headers, paste them right above. And what we're going to do is in here, we're going to enter the filter criteria. So if I want to filter by total, I'll put something here, quantity here, name here, and so on. And that's why, though they don't have to be lined up directly like this in the same columns, it does make your life a bit easier. Now let's add some filter criteria. Let's make life simple at first. Let's say we want to go to the total column and show everything that has a value greater than 30. And I will cover these operators in a moment. So what we do here is we go click anywhere in your data set, although it doesn't really matter for now, click the advanced button right here in the sort and filter group on the data tab. So data tab, advanced. And at first it, it really does not seem advanced at all, but that's because we put our criteria in the worksheet. So we have a few options here, filter the list in place, a really cool one, copy to another location. So we leave all of this data alone we're not going to be doing that in this tutorial, though. And then when you want to get a unique result, so only unique records, so some really cool little additions. But here we're just going to be dealing with the criteria. So let's get that done. First thing is list range. If you clicked in here, it should automatically select it, including the headers. But if it doesn't, you can just delete this dude and select your data. OK. It can be a bit finicky. Let me try again. Select the data. OK. And don't worry if it says sheet one like that. It's still referencing the same range here. Now we go to criteria range. This time I'm going to hit the little up arrow just to get this out of the way from now for now. And what you want to do here is to select all of the headers and the criteria. Now I'm going to hit enter. So we have our list range and our criteria range. Filter the list in place. Now I'll watch this dude change when I hit OK. And we have only the results greater than 30. 
let's say I want to do all the results less than 30. First, I'm going to go ahead and click down here. Or actually, before I do that, notice that what's happened here, none of the data was deleted. It has just been hidden. So you can see these rows right here are in blue, and it goes from 8, 9, 12, 13, 15. So it hid the rows, just like it does with a regular filter, but there are no drop-down arrows here. So at first, it can seem kind of confusing or not very intuitive. But it did the filter. It's just not showing you that it's done except for the hidden rows over here. Now, if you want to remove it, just go to the Data tab and click Clear. That should be visible once you perform an advanced filter, and everything comes back. Let's say that we want to do less than 30. I'm going to go ahead and do a less than. Click Advanced. Make sure it's OK. List range, A2 to F3. OK, criteria range. Actually, no, wait. List range. OK. That's the criteria range. Let's reselect this. So when you go and run the advanced filter, it makes life easier if you just automatically sell, or click a cell down here in the table before you click the advanced button. Now, criteria range, good. A2 to F3. Okie dokie. Hit OK. Now, all of the ones less than 30. So you can use the regular comparison operators greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and not equal to. So let's say that we want to do not equal to 15. We can go up here, and the not equal to sign, it's the one that confuses people the most, but it's a less than and then a greater than sign. That's all. Not a special weird symbol, just a less than and a greater than sign. Make it at 15. Go down here, clear it, advanced. OK. Now everything except for a value of 15 is down here. Let's say we want to make it equal to 35. So let's type 35. See what happens. Good. Criteria range, good. And 35. So I think I've covered all the bases for greater than, less than, greater than, less than, equal to, not all those guys. <laughs> Let's move on to text now. This is the one that uh, starts intuitive and gets a little weird rather quickly. So let's clear that. Let's clear this. And let us go over here. And let's say we want to view spice. So I type spice. OK. Advanced. Okie dokie. And we get all the results for Spice. Nice and easy. OK, just as we expected. Now let's back that up. And let's type sugar. So you see we have sugar on its own and sugar with additional words. Advanced. OK. Well, what is that? So this match right here was not a match for the entire cell contents. It was instead a match for actually just the first word of the cell. So it's not any word in the cell, just the first word. So here it matches the entire cell contents. Here it's just the first word. So if I type T, okay, start fresh, advanced, okay. Nothing shows up. So let's reverse that once more. OK. So when you type it in like that, just remember, it's the first word of the cell or the entire cell contents. Now, how do we get it to match only the entire cell contents? This is a bit goofy. OK. We type an equal sign, a quotation mark, then an equal sign, then the word to match, then a quotation mark. The second equal sign can be difficult to remember, <laughs> if I'm honest. And it will appear like this. And this is what we wanted it to do, equal sugar. But when we double click, we will see the quotation marks and the two equal signs. So let's Go down here and run this now. Only one result, sugar. <laughs> so this is a pain. It's very easy to forget, not going to lie. 
but if you want an exact match, you must follow this format. Equal sign, quote, equal sign. What to match? Another quote. Now let's get to some of the cool stuff. So let's delete this, clear this, and let's say we want everything greater than 25. And we want only the spice products to appear. So let's go over here, equals, quote, equals, spice, quote, enter. Run our filter, advanced, OK. Greater than 25 and only spice. So we are now moving on to the and and the or checks. So if you want something to be applied such that every condition must be met, you enter it into this first row. So greater than 25 and equal to spice. If I put something here, it would be and whatever this is, and this, and this, and this. Now the reason earlier on we put many rows between the criteria and the table is because we can put criteria on additional rows. And when you do that, that creates the or condition checks. So if it's on the same line, and we'll go through examples, don't worry, if it's on the same line, it is and. When it's on multiple lines, it is or. So let's do this. Let's say total must be greater than, let's say, 30 or less than 20. Now, when we do this, we have to, before running the filter, make one tiny change. When, when we add something to a subsequent row for our criteria range, we must now select the new row. So the header, the row below it with criteria, and the next row with criteria. So all of the criteria rows. Then hit enter. And now we have everything over 30, under 20. So separate rows means or, same row means and. Now let's say we want it to be greater than 30 and equal to spice. I'm going to put spice like this because I know that spice is only entered once. There's no cell with other words after spice. So I want it to equal spice and be greater than 30 or be a less than 20. Actually, there's only one less than 20, which is spice. So let me go ahead and change that to lead. So lead, product lead. Now clear the filter, advanced, OK. OK, I made a little mistake there. Back that up. <laughs> make sure to select in the data set, of course. Like I said, it's easy to make these little tiny mistakes. Just hit Control-Z, and it will be fixed. So list range down here, criteria range up there. OK. All right. So greater than 30 and lead. Perfect. Or less than 20, one which is spice. Perfect. So once you have this down, it's very easy to keep adding on to them. So let's say greater than 30 and we want quantity larger than 5. Larger than 5. OK. Perfect. And of course, even though the quantity here is less than 5, it doesn't matter because it meets the criteria of total being less than 20. And it's on a separate line. So it means we do all of this, or we do this. Now let's clear the filters, and let's add a third line. Let's say that we want it to equal exactly Michael Scott. So now we have a third criteria row. So lead greater than 5, greater than 30, or less than 20, or Michael Scott. 
Now we're adding a new criteria row. So once we click advanced, we must update the criteria range just like this. Oops. Hit OK. And now we have Michael Scott's records. And this right here, I wanted to make sure that I showed you how to add a third row. This is so nice because for the regular filter, you can only ever do two things. You can do one criteria and another criteria, or one criteria or another criteria, but that's it. You don't get to mix and match all of these different things. And this is what makes the advanced filter, well, advanced. And this is what makes it nice. Once you have your data set up, you have your filter ranges, how you want them with the titles and all that jazz, all you have to do is play around with these guys up here and then run the filter and you can mix and match it pretty much however you want. And there really is a lot more that you can do that's beyond this tutorial. One helpful little thing, by the way, if you figure out how many criteria rows you want to have, you might want to give them a different background color just to make your spreadsheet a little bit easier to figure out. You could give them whatever you wanted, something like this, or maybe you don't like that. Give the title row a, another. Okay, I'm not coming up with great formatting ideas here, but the point is that the first time some, a user sees this setup, it's going to be very confusing. This makes it a little bit easier, and you can put a note rather than just filter criteria. You could say, enter filter criteria on the different rows here, blah, 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 or whatever you want to make it easier to understand that this is where you enter the criteria for filtering, and this down here is left alone as it is your data table that will be filtered. So that's one little helpful thing that I like to do. The main thing is play around with the filter options and memorize this annoying syntax right here. Because everything is built, or everything for advanced filters pretty much is built off of what I've showed you here, the basics of and, or, and all of these comparison operators. But that's it for this tutorial, and I hope you learned a lot. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.